Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Who is Who in America. We have a very, very interesting person with us in the studio, in Al Hikmat studio. And it's always a blessing and a pleasure to have viewers from all over the world. This program will be very enlightening for you viewers from all over the world. You're going to be totally thrilled speaking and listening to this person that we have here today, Rabbi Moshe. A man who was born in Argentina, uh, married an Israeli woman, speaks uh, Hebrew and other languages. He is a rabbi, a very interesting background, and he's president of Friends of Ziv Medical Center. That's what we're going to talk about, Rabbi Moshe and what he does and the services of Ziv Medical Center or the Friends of Ziv Medical Center, what they do, how they help each other, and what sort of services the world and people in the world benefit from organizations like this and people like Rabbi Moshe. So welcome to the show, Rabbi. Thank you very much. You're very gracious. <laughs> uh, it is really a pleasure to have you with us and a man with so many different um, a unique, such a unique background and so many different languages and your, 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 your mom is from France, your dad from Turkey. What do you call yourself if your wife is Israeli, your mom is from France, your dad from Turkey, and you were born in Argentina? That's an interesting personality. I call myself a human being. Wow, <laughs> and that's what it should be. <laughs> yes. I love that. That's a fantastic way of answering because of the fact that that's what human beings are all about. You know, God has created us in this world, and we should not really despise one another by nationality, by color, by race, by language, by religion, because we are one people, and we were created by God in this very diverse method because that's a sign of love, bringing different people of different races, cultures, languages, religions together, and you produce a good human being. You said everything. Can I go now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really enjoy that. I really um, enjoy talking to you, and I'm sure we can benefit, and our viewers will benefit a lot from your experience. So tell us about your being a rabbi. How did this all come about? By accident. Uh, you know, I'm identify with these uh, new generations of young kids that discover the need of uh, spirituality mm -hmm. uh, relatively late in their lives. In other words, they were not born uh, in a spiritual family or a religious family. I wasn't. And when I was 14, I decided that life was uh, very important to be just wasted mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. with uh, sports, drinking, and so on. And I decided to go into rabbinical school. And uh, where did you study this? Which rabbinical school? I went to the Seminario Rabbinico Latinoamericano, the Latin American Rabbinical School in Buenos Aires, which was associated with the Jewish Theological Seminary of New York. And uh, we had faculties from uh, New York coming to Buenos Aires. I came to New York in several times and so on. Because when someone hears that you are a rabbi, immediately they will connect to Israel or Jerusalem and think that you studied there. So did you go there for any um, extensive study or what was it like? Because it, it is already interesting to know that you became a rabbi in Argentina. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah, and at the time it was a curiosity. Actually, and, and you learned Hebrew there. That's correct. And actually, my first job as a rabbi was in Chile. And at the time, when I arrived in Chile, there was no rabbi at all. Wow. And after seven years, we were only two rabbis in the country. So at the time, there were not the amount of rabbis that there are today. Uh, and what year are we speaking about? Uh, the 70s. Okay. Uh, um, 72, 73, uh, those years. And. Um, Yes, uh, when I was in rabbinical school, I, w I went to Israel to study uh, mm -hmm. several times, to seminars. In fact, I studied with excellent uh, uh, professors. I met, when I was a young kid, uh, a great philosopher by the name of Martin Buber. 
mm -hmm. who is known by very well by Christians because he wrote a very famous book that became the basis of uh, phi philosophy called I and Tao. And uh, it was a, a great privilege for me to, to study at that time with these people. It was a generation of uh, teachers that no longer exist. Uh, these were really giants uh, that came out of Second World War. In Jerusalem? In Jerusalem, in the, in the United States, also the magnitude of the rabbis at the time. Now, when you speak about rabbis, remember that in Judaism, like in any other religion, we have different branches or what we call denominations. We have mm -hmm. Orthodox, Conservatives, Reform, and uh, so on. So I belong to one of the uh, branches what, which was the conservative movement. Oh, the conservative. So while you were studying in um, Jerusalem, did you have any experience in meeting with Islamic scholars, Muslims? What sort of experience you've had with Muslims other than what the world hears and sees on the news? Yeah, well, very interesting. Um, <laughs> I had different stints of studies in Israel uh, when I was in the seminary, but then I went to study at the uh, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, and I was a, a, a student, and I needed to make some money. So I started uh, uh, work as a sports instructor for the Jerusalem YMCA, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was run by Muslims. It was a Christian organization, but all the employees were, were Muslim. And the truth is, I had never met a Muslim before in my life. In Argentina, you didn't have at the time. So I what are we saying here? YMCA, Young Men. Men Christian Association. That's correct. In Jerusalem, run by Muslims. Yes. Wow. Famous. <laughs> what? How very phenomenal. Yeah, famous. And, you know, it's like um, uh, we talk about blacks and whites in, in the United States. But because also I come from a country where there were no blacks in Argentina, I don't see color. Uh -huh, uh -huh, so, uh -huh. and I came from a country that was Christian, so I also don't see religion. I never right, saw right. a difference between one another. So all my friends in Jerusalem during my student years were Muslims, you know. Were, in Jerusalem? Yes, they were Palestinians, uh, Arabs. Uh, many of them came from Lebanon, spoke French. I sp it's my mother tongue. Uh -huh. We used to get together. I, uh, we, <laughs> we have a fantastic story. We, I had a friend at the university that studied with me that was married. They were from America, and he, his wife was blonde uh, with blue eyes, and she was a scholar in Arabic language. She spoke a fluid Arabic language, and she was working on her PhD. So each uh, week we were uh, inviting them to come to us, to the old city of Jerusalem, because when we would go into an Arab uh, uh, restaurant, in they Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, they would treat us uh, like royalty. Wow. They had never seen a blonde, blue eye speaking perfect Arabic, so we would get excellent food and, <laughs> and <I> mean, service. <laughs> you become one of a very special person in the world, unique, you know. <laughs> Perks. Now, let me ask you a question. You know, someone out there in the world listening to the news in the West, having no background that you have with your Western upbringing, and that's what I would like to say, your sure. Western upbringing, your experience, the Middle Eastern experience, knowledge and background. Someone in the West, if they were to ask you, well, this hate and this um, animosity that we see on the news about Muslims and Jews, is that real? What, what, you know, about politicians having to make peace. We, what would you really tell them? Is it all about politics or politicians and the media just simply create an opportunity so they can just strive on it as, as opposed to the love and the affection and the humanitarian relationship you have experienced? Well, I think that, uh, first of all, situations are very complex and they cannot be uh, simply defined or explained. I can just explain about my experiences. Mm -hmm. And my experiences with Arabs in Israel and with Israelis mm -hmm. is that I never s thought or felt antagonism between the two groups, not even today when I go. Mm -hmm. And as in fact, when I w walk in the hospital, Ziv Medical Center, I hear more Arabic than Hebrew on the corridors because uh, half of the personnel are either uh, Arab speakings uh, from a 
uh, from Israel or they are even immigrants from other countries that are working in the hospital. I don't see, I don't feel the tension. In, you know, I read it like you read it in yeah, the newspapers yeah. and, and all that. And yes, I have to wonder at what level this antagonism exists. Does it's, uh, it's at the ground level? Is at the politician level? Is it at the intellectual level? Or is it's just basically, yes, things exist, as you rightly said, but a lot of times it's just blown out of proportion by politicians and the media. Again, I think it's more complex than that. As a Jew, I have experienced anti-Semitism in, in my life, and, uh -huh. I, and my, my parents are uh, survivors of, uh, of a concentration camp, uh, my mother. But uh, uh, I, I find it more on the ideological uh, level. I find it more, let's say, on political levels like the left uh -huh. or the extreme right, um, a strong ideological position, but not in talking to people one-to-one so, so let's get back to the real core of what we really want to talk about on the show today. I mean, it's who's who in America, so we had to talk about you. We want to know what you do, what you did, where you came from. So I suppose our audience got an idea of your background, your very uh, multicultural, multi-faith background. What caused you and how did you become the president? Or how was this Friends of Zeev Medical Center formed? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, thank you for asking that question because, again, all those things, the important things in your life always happen by accident. Mm -hmm. Or somebody may say because there's a hand guiding uh, the way. God's mercy. Maybe. God's guidance, yeah. Once I was uh, uh, at a party uh, of Israelis and everybody was speaking Hebrew and a new couple comes in and I come to greet them in Hebrew, and the man says to me, sorry, I don't speak Hebrew. And I said, oh, no, no problem. He says, from where are you? And he says, I'm from Argentina. I says, oh, funny, I'm from Argentina too. And uh, I asked him, what are you doing? And where was this? In, at a party. Where, where? In, uh, here in, uh, in Florida, about f three years ago. Okay, beautiful, yeah. And I asked him, uh, you know, what, uh, uh, what do you do? And he says, I'm a doctor. And I said, oh, where do you work? Cleveland Clinic. Interesting. Interesting. And what do you do there? He says, I'm the chief of staff of Cleveland Clinic. So I'm a kind of a very appealed, an Argentinian like me, and he's the chief of staff of one of the major hospitals uh -huh, in South uh -huh, Florida. Uh -huh. Extremely interesting. We, we start talking, and I ask him from which uh, city is he in, in Argentina, and he tells me that he's at a city 300 kilometers from where I was born. He asked me, have you uh, visited the city? I said, no, I've never been in my life there. We keep on talking about our parents and connections, and suddenly he says, you had dinner at my home. I said, can be. I had never been in that city. He says, yes. You were in 1967 as a student rabbi conducting services in our town. And then I remember that in my first year of rabbinical school, they sent me. Uh, to this city to uh -huh, conduct uh -huh. services. And he said, you know, I remember you because I was a little child and you made such an impression on me. And uh, I could never forget it. How unique. So, so I'm unique, right? A few months later, he calls me over the phone and he says, look, I'm trying to create um, a non-profit charitable organization to support this hospital in Israel, which I had visited and it needs our help. And I need you to be on the board. Now, how can I say to a person that says, you changed my life when I was a kid, mm -hmm. no, you, mm -hmm. you cannot be on the board? I said, sure, what do I have to do? And he said, nothing, just be on the board. Six months later, he comes to me and he says, look, I can't keep on running this organization. You have to take out the presidency. And uh, I tried to run away, you know, as much as I could, like any prophet in Israel or like, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I said, not me look for somebody else. I tried to find somebody else. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And that's how I became the president of this organization. And when I became the president of this organization, I met the director general of the hospital. And he changed my life. I was in complete awe. This is a man that served uh, for 25 years in the Israel Defense Forces as a doctor. So you met him in Israel? No, he came here to the United States okay. to give a lecture. 
and I met him in, uh, uh, he's a former officer of the army for 25 years and he takes over the hospital and then I find out that he's not a Jew, he's a Druze. A Druze. And I never met a Druze in my life before. And the man is speaking and I couldn't know the difference between a Druze and a Jew. Neither I knew the Druze uh, were uh, heads of hospitals in so, Israel. So do you think many people know the difference between Druze and Jews? <laughs> and it, it's funny that you say that because many times when I talk to synagogues or audiences or through the country and I said the, the head of the hospital is a Druze, people understand that I said a Jew. <laughs> they That's don't understand that I said that he's a Druze. That is interesting. So, he, uh, so, so, so what's the background? What is his background and uh, being a, a Druze? Well, the Druze uh, lived in, the, in Israel uh, forever uh, and actually they also live in the Golan Heights and, and in Syria. And in 1948, when the state of Israel was created, um, the Druze communities stay in Israel, which you know talks uh, volumes about uh, those who say that Israel kicked out all those that were not Jews uh, of the land. These. So you got Christian Druze and Muslim Druze. No. Can I say that? No, you can't. Uh, Druze is a religion by itself. Uh, so Druzes are. So Druzes. they form their own religion. Yes, they have their own religion, of course. It's a very um, old religion, but it's also secretive. We know very little about them, but they live in their own communities. But well, when I said Christian and Muslim, but their origin would have been from Christian background. No, it would have been from Muslim background. Muslim background. Yes, the Druze are, as far as my ignorance allows me, uh, they are uh, originally from Islam. and. Uh, there are a branch of Islam, though I understand that for Islam they are considered heretics. Okay, okay. I, I mean, I'm just looking at the, the history and the, the, the spin of Judaism and Christianity and Islam in that territory and the Holy Land. So, you know, those from those times would have been, you know, from the Muslims. And even the Muslims, they would have previously been Christians, some of them. You know, it, but, it has but, that but whole I think scenario. But I think that more important than that, if we are talking about the Druze, is that they live in a territory that is both Israel, Syria, and also parts of Lebanon. Uh -huh. Right? Uh, you know, these are like uh, populations, I imagine, like the Kurds that live in different uh, places that history has separated them because of borders. Good, good. So, the founder of Ziv Medical Center is a Druze. Not the founder, but the general director today. Oh, the general director today. Uh, okay. Ziv Medical Hospital is one of the oldest hospitals in Israel. It was uh, uh, built at the beginning of the 20th centuries, in the 1900s, mm -hmm. so, uh, before even the state of Israel existed as a political entity. This hospital was there. So, I mean, we have already We've already crossed uh, more than 15 minutes talking already, and we got to continue with this show, and I want to go on a commercial break here so that we can continue afterwards. I would really like us to get more in details with this uh, Ziv Medical Center, what it does, what kind of communities it serves, how it's probably financed, and what its other activities that benefit the people there and that can benefit people in the world or how people can benefit from it or how it can benefit from people. So when we come back, we're going to continue on Ziv Medical Center and what friends of Ziv Medical Center do to help this center because I'm sure people and our viewers who are worldwide will really, really benefit a lot. It will be a good uh, educational sort of information for them because, you know, a lot of these things you were telling me is very new to me. And I am very, very happy to have a person like you on this show. So thank you very much for viewing. It's been a pleasure to have with us Rabbi Moshe. And we're going to continue after the commercial break on the services of Ziv Medical Center. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Due to the negative propaganda against the Quran and the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it has become imperative upon us to spread the message of the Quran, inshallah. 
Therefore, Al Hikmat kindly requests your support to pledge and sponsor 100,000 Quran drives on CDs. Join us sponsoring Qurans on CDs for free distribution fees to Bilallah for Muslims and non-Muslims worldwide. You can also sponsor on behalf of family members and relatives that have passed away as Sadiqah Jariyah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Al-Hikmat Services, serving the Muslim community and non-Muslim community. Dawah and interfaith activities, distribution of Quran and Islamic publications, sponsoring students to study Islam, Al-Hikmat Dai. Dawa and Interfaith Institute. Also, Friday sermons by Sheikh Shafaid are live on alhikmatv.com from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Download our free Al Hikmat TV app on your mobile devices. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Feel free to donate to Al Hikmat Dawa services online with a credit card or PayPal at alhikmat.com. For more details, contact Al Hikmat office at one 800 804-0267 or our local number 954-986-0158 and visit us at www.alhikmat.com Jazakallah khair al Hikmat has been serving the Muslim and non-Muslim communities for the past 30 years through the publishing and distribution of Islamic literature and radio and also TV programs plus interfaith activities Due to the demand and many requests of non-Muslims and new Muslims for Islamic literature, we request you to donate generously one dollar, fi sabilillah, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, towards distribution of the Holy Quran, al Hikmah TV 24-7 online, Dawah publications, Surah and Zikr books, genealogy of the prophets, feeding and clothing the poor, orphans, and the needy, students seeking to study Islam, printing of Islamic publications, our monthly Muslim magazine, One God, Same Religion Dawa brochures, Quranic Arabic reader with Tajweed for students, and also to support our Dawa activities, you can also contact Al Hikmat offices at 954 986 0158, at 954 986 0158, or you can also visit our website at www.alhikmat.com. That is www.alhikmat. Dot com. You can also make checks payable to Al Hikmat Services Incorporated or you can donate with a credit card on PayPal at www.alhikmat.com. Welcome back to Who is Who in America. And again, it's a pleasure to have with us in Al Hikmat studio Rabbi Moshe. And as you heard before, Who is Who in America and Al Hikmat TV runs 24 7 online. You can get us anytime, anywhere, worldwide. And again, having someone like Rabbi Moshe, as we were talking earlier on before we went on the break, with his sort of experience and his international background definitely benefits people worldwide because we live in a very small world today. So welcome again, Rabbi Moshe. Now, we were at the point before we went on the break on Ziv Medical Center being established by Israel but who are the people that it serves really? Do Muslims and Christians and other people benefit or only Israelites? Uh, this is a very, very good question. This is the northern most uh, hospital in Israel. It's just three miles from the border with uh, Lebanon and 15 miles from the border with uh, Syria. This is northern Israel. Mm -hmm. it, the catch-all population is about 250,000 people. And this is a multicultural population. Here you have uh, Christians, Muslims, Jews, Bedouins, Druze, even Circassians living together. Mm -hmm. Plus, mm -hmm. of course, you have an international community. Uh, the UN forces are uh, established there. Okay, the peacekeepers okay. uh, of... Uh, come uh, to, the, to this hospital and tremendous amount of uh, tourists because of the beauty of the area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, when do you have someone, but what I say, in Israel or something who pay the taxes and who finance this Ziv Medical Center? So Jews, let's be, l l let me break it down to real normal language here. The Jewish people who finance this medical center, 
or the people's tax that are paid for this, do they have a problem with non-Jews benefiting from the facilities? Well, I, I have to, uh, not correct, but define more clearly the situation. Um, the citizens of Israel mm -hmm. are not all Jews. Christians are citizens of Israel. Muslims are citizens of Israel. So now we are talking about all the citizens of Israel have a medical insurance provided by the government. Okay, okay. So when they go to a government hospital like Ziv, they come with their uh, equivalent to Medicare or Medicaid from us, and they pay with their insurance card. Now, when Syrians come, these are people that, uh, in fact, come uninvited. It's uh, a humanitarian rescue operation, if you want okay, to. Okay. Uh, they have no means of paying. And they have no medical card. No medical card. They have absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. So it is the state. And, and, and when you say Syrian, you mean Muslim Syrians, Christian Syrians, or any? And again, this is a very interesting question because technically uh, the state of Israel and Syria are at war. Okay. In any event, they have no relations whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So these people show up at the border in dire conditions. Uh, most of them are at the point of their life uh, extinguishing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Israel takes care of them without asking, not even their names. They are registering the hospital as N and N. Of course, they don't come with a medical history. They don't come with a folder saying, what's affecting them or what's their story. So Israel uh, doesn't ask questions. They don't ask about their religion. They don't ask about their political affiliation. They just give humanitarian aid. So presently, Syrians who go at this hospital, they benefit whether they're citizen of Israel or not. Uh, that's what we're seeing for the layman throughout the world who, are, who is listening to this show and viewing this program. Well, you know, I, I can tell you uh, tens of stories about uh, that will touch your heart and it will break your heart at the same time. But uh, let me explain to you this in general terms. Most of these people that come to the border are uh, come because trauma. This is war. Mm -hmm. So some one of the limbs has been either destroyed or seriously compromised. The international protocol says that uh, the mission of doctors is to save lives. Mm -hmm. So if a limb is compromised in all the hospitals of the world, they will amputate the limb in order to save the life of the patient. An amputation, as far as I understand today, is a pretty uh, simple operation. It takes a short time, and two, three days later, the patient goes back home without mm -hmm. a leg, without an arm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The incredible thing about Israel is that Israelis do not amputate. Israelis will do everything they can to save a limb for their population, and they apply exactly the same principle for the Syrians. They do not discriminate whether it is a paying or a non-paying client, so to speak. These operations uh, to save a limb may take uh, uh, 17 operations in order to save a limb. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And on top of that, uh, many months of hospitalization, which regarding to your question before, means occupying a bed. Um, the cost of, uh, of, of these operations are extremely expensive because of the, com the complexities and the number of different departments that have to work on it. And this so far is paid by uh, the state of Israel and by volunteers, uh, by people all over the world that wants to contribute to this. Uh, and th I think that is very interesting for the world to know because a lot of people would uh, totally be astonished that here the Israeli government is, is um, you know, it's a government hospital and uh, with the present state of affair in the world and Syria and Israel, Israeli, Israel and all these governmental situations that go on there right now, I mean, let's be real, there are a lot of question marks. And to know that the hospital does not really get into the political aspect of things right now, they just take care of the patient, the sick, as the case may be. You know, I find this uh, many times when I speak, uh, particularly in colleges, 
that I have uh, somebody standing out and says, the Israeli are hypocrites because they are doing these just for propaganda. They are not just doing it for the goodness of their heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I say to them, first of all, if I am a person that's bleeding on the floor, what do I care if the person that's helping me is doing it by the goodness of his heart or because of propaganda? The fact is that he's helping me and I'm saving my life. Well, that's the bottom line. That's, that's the first thing that we have to take into consideration. But me being a foreigner visiting the hospital and talking to the doctors, which are absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, these are people that are performing operations and developing techniques that in the world they don't know about them. As a matter of fact, uh, the hospital has just published a book about all the operations that they have done in these past three years because the medical uh, uh, community is asking for that to find that. Uh, we have doctors coming uh, to the United States to lecture uh, uh, about uh, techniques that they are uh, absolutely unknown here. Um, I'm not going to go into, into this right now in details, but when I talk to these doctors, I want to ask them, what are you doing here? Why don't you go to Harvard or to Yale? Uh, you are in a little dusty town in the north of the, and the answer is, this is our vocation. This oh, is okay. what a doctor does. So uh, it's completely unacceptable to me to say that there are hidden uh, um, uh, policies there. The government of Israel doesn't direct the policy of helping the Syrians. Syrian shows at the borders, doctor says, there's a person that needs my help, I'm helping them. Okay, okay, and that's very humanitarian. Now your, your organization here in the United States of America, Friends of Ziv Medical Center, what do you do for the organization? Well, first of all, we try for to the hospital. Let's be. First of all, we try to create awareness of what's happening. Okay. This was something that, until recently, was kept very much hush hush, because uh, uh, there were security considerations. When a patient from Syria comes to Israel for treatment and then he's released, he stops at the Israeli border mm -hmm. and check to make sure that nothing reflects that he has been in the country of Israel. They check the labels of his clothes to make sure that there's nothing in Hebrew. If he comes with medicine, they make sure that there's no Hebrew writing. Why? Mm -hmm. Because if w he comes back to Syria and they find out that he has been in Israel, his life would be compromised. Mm. So we have, we as an organization, the hospital, the state of Israel has to protect the life of the Syrian patient when he goes back to his country such as the uh, animosity. And we understand that many of those patients, when they ask who took care of you, they said, we went to Jordan. Oh, so, so there, is, there isn't anything like uh, some special medical certificate to show that they went basically for medical reasons? No, no, they would, the, the state of animosity at the political level oh, is okay. such in uh, the culture that even, look, even the, the Syrians that come to Israel, they come as a last resource. They used to come as a last resource. Now that they know the quality of the service, they are trying to, to fight to come in, in, to Israel instead of going to Jordan. But they came as a last resource, thinking that the life was gone because they grew up mm -hmm. uh, uh, taught about the devil that are the Israelis and the Jews. They even, uh, some of these people have thought that Israelis has tails. Mm. And, and you know, that's why it's nice that we talk and let the world know that um, that is not how things are really. I mean, you may have, you know, people who propagate certain things and propaganda and brainwashing the minds of other people, but I think the world needs to understand the real thing, what's happening. Separate the politics from the social, economical issues, the humanitarian issues. Yes, politicians, wherever they are in the world, you got good politicians you got bad politicians, people who got their own personal agenda. You got people who are there for the country and the, the, the citizens of the country and the betterment of the, the, the people that live and the betterment of the country. So you cannot really um, tarnish an entire country and people because of a few bad people, if I would put it like that, or whatever has happened in history. And you know, that's what we like here in this, in this show, you know, who is who in America, global issues, interfaith, views and issues 
we talk on all these things and different issues on this show on Al Hikma TV. And uh, it's really a pleasure to have someone like you on this show and would clarify these sort of things. Because if people don't know, they remain in darkness. You know, in Arabic, there is a saying, Al Elmon Nurun, knowledge is light. And when people are better educated and have more awareness, as what you are doing, friends, um, friends for Z Medical. Z Medical Center, by awareness, it enlightens the world, enlightens people. And, you know, we get out of the darkness and we become a better people. Once upon a time, you're right, people who would have visited Israel would have had a problem going to another country. And I know Israel will cooperate and not stamp their passport and just give them a card of entrance and exit. And I think some of that are just getting, fading away automatically. Uh, have you, do you have any experience in that area? Well, uh, I, I, of course, I know this, uh, this issue, and I still understand that many people uh, don't want their passports to be imprinted with Israel, and I think that is very tragic, but it, there's a point that... But I, that is fading away, because a lot of country has... It doesn't, it doesn't matter much in some places or most places. Some places, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know yeah, exactly. Yeah. But one of the issues that I really want to point is, uh, you were talking about politicians. And uh, I think the world needs politicians. Of otherwise, course. you would not be able to run. Because they are the policy makers. <laughs> right. But uh, politicians have their interests. Uh, yes. They are careers, and they have things to do. And uh, it's endemic to, to, to who they are. I, as a rabbi, and, and you uh, as a sheikh, um, we understand that the main concern of religion is the protection of life, mm -hmm, of mm -hmm, human life in all mm -hmm. its forms, physically and spiritually. This is our concern. I think that doctors have this, uh, share the same idea with us. Lo there's nothing more important or, uh, or that has uh, a major priority than uh, saving a life. And that's what Ziv does. That's what our organization does. And that's what we are trying uh, to people to encourage. Um, we are appalled by the war in Syria because of this complete disregard for life. We're not entering into the political issue mm -hmm. or the reasons why they have to fight or they could solve the problem in another way. But the way uh, life is so cheap yes. in, in, uh, in Syria. According to statistics, uh, if we go by the number of uh, death uh, to the moment, 219 uh, uh, Syrians die per day uh, right now. And these are children, women, not only men, not only combatants. And this, I think, it's an affront to us as humanity. It's yes, not a regional yes. issue. It's the fact that how can we live in a world like this, uh, tolerating? Uh, and people are dying every day by that great number. Children, it, women really that had nothing to do with this. Um, uh, doesn't matter if they're Syrian uh, friends, enemies. How we as human beings can tolerate such a thing? How can we live wi with such a situation and not do anything? Yeah, that is, that is really sad. Well, you know, as we conclude the show, um, we've been talking. Would you be amazed? You'd be amazed. We have just spoken for over 15 plus minutes again. And it's nice because it's an interesting topic. And it's something that the world needs to know about and need to be educated. And these are some things that people just keep hushed down. A lot of media do not really make this interesting because uh, it gets political for them and maybe may not bring business for them. But you know what? al TV, al is wisdom. And we want the world to be much wiser, better understanding. And that's why it's a pleasure to have someone and like may you. may you be blessed for doing this. Thank you. And that's why it's a pleasure to have a rabbi, someone like you on the show. And uh, we can join together and educate the world for peace and love and harmony and let the world be a much more happier place to live and to be happier. So I give you the last how go. The last word is how you say amen in Arabic. Amin. <laughs> there you go. Amin. I mean, so anything else you'd like to say to our audience? God bless you for all that you are doing, which is what we are doing. Try to create awareness and awake the conscience of humanity. Well, Rabbi Moshe, it's really a pleasure to have you on the show. And uh, to our viewers out there, may God bless, may God show his mercy, guidance, protection, and Rabbi Moshe on all of us, the kind of work he is doing. 
And uh, I, I would say not just medical, it's about sharing love and peace and harmony and bringing people together and saving lives and helping the world in his organization's Friends of Z Medical Center. And maybe you go online or you can contact us in Al Hikmat or you'll be able to get hold of the rabbi's organization to know more if you want to know more and learn more about this organization. But I really appeal to you, our viewers, dear, it's important to be enlightened and be aware of the real happening in the world before we make decisions and say things and commit sin by saying the wrong things. And this is what Al Hikmat is all about making people wiser, we learn more, we are better people, we benefit from others and others benefit from us. And that's what life is all about. That's what God really intended, that we all help each other and live in a happier world as one family, one people. And may God bless you, the viewers out there. May God bless you, Rabbi Moshe. And always stay tuned to Al-Hikmah 24-7 online. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you. Allah.